testing audio. In today's video, I am going to be giving you some updates, some life updates, channel updates. Never really thought I would be putting a video out like this, but I think it's kind of necessary. So let's get into it. I've decided that I need to burn some sage before we really get into it. And everyone in my family hates how this smells, so I'm not gonna be able to really keep it lit for that long, but uh, it's pretty necessary right now. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Living by the Upward. As you can tell, I am in a new location and I will get to that a little later but I wanted to hop on here. I haven't filmed in quite some time. Uh, I have been going through some stuff, guys, so it's definitely not as bad as what other people are experiencing in the world right now, but I understand and I recognize that my issues really aren't that significant in the grand scheme of things, but nonetheless, still a frustrating week and a half for me the past almost two weeks, basically. And even currently sitting down trying to film this, just a lot of technical issues that I will get into. But I just want you to know, I do recognize that there are far severe problems than the ones I have out there. And so I just hope you're all doing well. You know, I, I really do hope you're all doing well because, you know, the world is, is going through some stuff right now. It's, it's really something else. So with that being said, this basically is for most of my subscribers or for anyone that decides to click on this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jess. I'm a fine artist, flight attendant, and festival enthusiast. And I talk about F words here on my channel. So I actually have my phone with me with a little outline of, um, what I want to say because I just kind of felt like it was necessary to come on here and talk to you all about why I haven't uploaded. I was doing pretty good uploading once a week and now it's been almost a little over two weeks that I haven't uploaded and there's just like a lot of things that were happening and going on and I thought about doing an update video and I, I watch a lot of videos on how on YouTube experts on how to grow your channel and people that have had success growing their business on YouTube. And one of the things that I see a lot is if you have a smaller channel, which I do right currently, uh, don't do a life update video. And the reason why they say that is because people don't care about your life and your fucking problems, especially if you're a smaller channel. You know, you typically people come to your channel because they want to learn something. They don't really care about like, you know, what's going on, problems, excuses, whatever. However, I thought about it and I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I may have a, a smaller channel, but there's still 222. That's right. Angel number. 222 subscribers to this channel which is really something else like in my opinion as far as youtube goes like to even have that many i really hope to grow more of course and i hope that the 2222 or not 2000 the 222 turns to 2222 or even 200 22,000 one day, you know? And so I think it's important since these people have been with me from the start that I do just talk to you about what's been going on in my life and what I plan on doing with this channel and all that. So let's see. Um, so this past week, I, I was off a few days for earlier this week and then last week I had vacation. I typically go out to Black Rock City and attend Burning Man and so I usually always try to bid for vacation during this time so that I can do that. I, In my head I 
earlier in the year, I was actually thinking, I don't think I'm going to go to Burning Man this year. Like I have this really like weird feeling that I should only attend odd years. And I, sh I could probably get into that in another video when I actually talk about Burning Man. But basically like my first year I went on an even year and a lot of stuff happened. It was like a chain reaction of like one thing after another would fix something, something else happened, fix something, something else happened. And it was like very like defeating feeling, right? So then 2017 I went and I had an amazing time and it's where I met my camp that I'm currently with, Camp Burner Brown, who I'm like obsessed with and I can't imagine camping with anyone else ever again. They're stuck with me. Anyone watching? You guys are stuck with me. <laughs> um, but it was an amazing experience. And then 2018, I didn't get awarded a low income ticket and I didn't try to fight to get, you know, get a ticket. It was actually when I converted the garage into a studio. So things always kind of fall into place and then, you know, happen as they should. 2019, odd year, went back last year. Best burn I've ever had. So I kind of just in my head was like, I don't know if I want to go 2020. <laughs> like, I really don't know if it's a good idea. And, you know, now here we are in 2020 and the week I should have been there, it was very similar to my first burn experience. It was one thing after another, after another, after another, like, it was like, give me a break, give me a break. Like, why is all this going on? So let's see, where should I start? I have a list so that I won't forget. Okay. So the first thing that happened was, my grandpa fell and he broke his hip. Now, I love my grandpa. I don't, my grandpa actually is one of my subscribers, um, but I love my grandpa. Uh, he actually is the one that told me about Burning Man and it was always my goal to bring him to Burning Man. Um, and the reason being is because when I wasn't driving, he would always drive me to the airport and he would hear about these parties that I was going to, Groove Cruise, all these raves and stuff. He would hear about him first. He would, you know, then pick me up from the airport and hear about the experience firsthand before anyone else. And then he also was like really one of the people that would see like my videos I would edit about festivals too first. So anyway, he's a very good friend of mine, not just my grandpa, but like he's just, he's a good friend to everybody. So anyway, he fell and he broke his <laughs> My memory card just filled up, so. So many camera issues. We will get there. Anyway, so my grandpa fell and broke his hip and uh, it was a little bit of a stressor, obviously, for my family. Um, in addition to other family members having health problems, uh, you know, it was it was a stressor. But on top of that, my mother actually had a foot surgery. And so I was driving her to work and picking her up every day, which obviously is not an issue in my eyes because for a long time I had a suspended license and her along with my grandpa and my sister and a lot of my friends drove me around and I still don't think people realize how much I appreciated the people that were there for me in those moments because it's a really difficult situation. But anyway, so I, I you know, that wasn't an issue, but it was more of like, with her trying to sort where my grandpa had to go to learn to walk again for rehabilitation, I was kind of taking on a lot of her energy and stresses and family stresses, not just from her. Like if someone else was upset or stressed, I was like hearing these conversations, you know, driving her to work and stuff like that. So anyways, my grandpa has been in a rehabilitation center to learn walking again. He's doing really good. So every, everything's okay. But like, that was kind of the start of, you know, this, this chain reaction of things happening. So the next thing that happened was I wanted to start filming some unboxings of my tarot and Oracle deck collection. I wanted to show people some cards that I have. I, really love card divination. It is very fascinating to me. It is something that has become a really big hobby and, and daily routine in my life, uh, as far as self care. 
And so I have decided I want to introduce this to my channel. And I thought to myself, well, I really want to do some videos explaining obviously the differences with different card systems before I just start uploading unboxings on my channel because my subscribers know I'm living by the F word. Well, tarot's not an F word. Card definition's not an F word. Lenormand cards aren't an F word, you know, but then I started thinking about it and I've always said, you know, this F word, this F word, this F word or whatever the fuck I want. And so this is kind of one of those whatever the fuck I want things, you know, like it's a big part of my life and I want to talk about it. Also, I do believe that it's a fine art. I think reading cards is an art and I also think that the imagery on the cards that these artists pour their heart and soul into in all these different decks is art. Uh, of course it's art, fine art. So, you know, I was thinking, oh, should I call it a series or something, you know, uh, you know, where it would have like an F in the title that way, you know, people, you know, could associate it with living by the F word, you know, I'm toying with all these ideas. And I was like, well, instead of like thinking about all this, why don't I just at least start filming the unboxings? That way I could have a jump start. And once I do have all these things sorted out and start, you know, actually talking about and putting out content like this on my channel, people aren't just like, why are you randomly <laughs> opening boxes of tarot and Oracle cards and stuff like that. So I started filming these unboxings and my camera was freezing. I had a Canon 70D and it was, I could, I noticed that it was frozen and then it was so bad to the point where when I would shut the camera off, it, the screen would stay on. It was basically bricked. It was like done. Everything I researched online and on YouTube in order to fix it, I tried, I thought I fixed it. And so I started filming an entire unboxing of this sacred self-care Oracle, um, which was a mess. I ended up slicing the box. You'll see the video. <laughs> it was a mess. And I thought that I recorded it, but turns out it never really recorded. And when I would turn the camera back on, it would be like all blue lines on my camera, red lines, like it was fucked up. So had to go get a new camera, which is what I'm filming on now, my new Canon 80D. This was an expense I wasn't planning on spending, of course. That's how it always is. It's like, you know, your washer breaks or your refrigerator breaks or something expensive breaks when you aren't planning for it. And that's how life goes, right? You know, but it was just like, oh fuck, I have to go drop a G now on a new camera. Um, so that happened. So I went and bought a new camera and in my head I was like, well, you know what? It was time. I had the Canon 7DD for over five years. The amount of places that camera went, three Burning Mans, uh, at least five electric for, for, forests, right? Cause I, I've been going since 2014 and I got the camera in 2015. Uh, groove cruises, uh, you know, building my burning, uh, my, my burning man camp, our art car build, all the different travel video, everything, all the videos I've sat down in the studio here and done for YouTube. I mean, it got a lot of, I got a lot of use out of that camera and, um, it was just time because I had bought that camera used and it just, uh, there was issues with it. Like right after I covered my first groove cruise with it, the switch from camera to video was getting jammed. I had to send it away to Canon cause I of course didn't have insurance on it cause I had bought it used from someone thinking that was the smartest thing to do. I will never do that again, by the way. Um, you know, and the, so that issue was happening and now it was freezing. And so, you know, just time to get a new one. Fine. Got a new one. So I had to spend a lot of time setting this new camera up. And then even in the midst of all that, it really wasn't set up properly because, um, I looked back at some of the footage I've filmed. Like I did some unboxings. I also have unboxed my step fitness equipment and I'm starting to 
vlog, a fitness journey I'm on once again uh, to hopefully get my ass back into shape. And um, <laughs> there was just so many things that happened, guys. Like I was trying to find a system as to what angle I like showing the cards. And so I basically have the camera set up over here usually and pointing down and so you could really see the cards. But I had took the, um, the lens off autofocus because someone within my YouTube uh, community, and I gave him a shout out in the video too, um, Angel, said, why don't you try, you know, basically taking it off autofocus and just manual focus it where you're going to hold it. That way the cards stay focused. And so I did that for one of these unboxings and it worked pretty good, I think. But then I forgot to put it back on autofocus. And so this whole fitness vlog, I vlogged so much fitness stuff and it's all out of focus. Like at least my studio's in focus, but I'm out of focus. Everything's out of focus. So there was that. And then there's also, I had major issues with my microphone. I have never had issues with this microphone with my old camera. And it's been nothing but static. There was so many things I had to refilm because it was straight up just static and like noise that I was like, no one is going to be able to watch or listen to this. And then even setting up this video today, I was having issues. Testing again, any static testing. Testing audio. Testing for static. Testing one last time for static. There's just a lot of new camera settings that I'm having to mess around with on this camera. Even though it's very similar to the camera I had, it's obviously a new camera and I have to set it up. And so there's just been like all these kind of like setbacks with that. And then also, you know, finally, when I finally got like everything in the middle of one of these unboxings done, you know, as far as static and stuff like that, I think, I don't even know, honestly, some, some stuff still may be staticky because I finally just changed the setting to a manual setting because I'm like, this is so crazy how shitty this sounds. But, um, my memory card got full. And so not just my memory card, but my external that I use is pretty full too. I mean, I have, I am a video hoarder. Anyone that knows me knows I will like have video footage from stuff and like years later I will drop it and like come out with some crazy video. Like perfect example is the garage converted stu studio series that was done in 2018 and I just shared it with everyone, you know, same thing with festival content. I will like hoard groove cruise footage and then come out with some like dope, groove cruise pre cruise trailer thing or something like that. I just, because I need to feel the creative energy and like want to work on that. So that's why I like to save all this video stuff. But the, the trade off with that is that all my external and my desktop on my Mac now is pretty much full. So I was like, you know what, let me go get an external hub. You know, so I went to Staples, I dropped my mom off at work one day, I I went to Staples on my way home and the one that I wanted, which was an eight terabyte. So it basically acts as like a desktop external drive that I would only keep at home. Like I'm not going to travel with this one, but it basically is going to just be the home of a lot of footage, right? The one that was on sale for eight terabytes for like 155 bucks or something like that. They didn't have it. Oh, we only have the six terabyte, which was only like a 10 or $15 difference from the sale price of the eight terabyte. And in my head, I'm like, this is bullshit. I could have like a whole other two terabytes. So I take the six terabyte one from them and they tell me, okay, go to this store. They have them in stock. So I went to that store, which is back past where my mom works, by the way. So it was like, drop my mom off, went here, go back. And when I get there, the girl's like, oh, you know, you really should call us first because we might not have them even though it says like that they're in stock or whatever. Long story short, luckily they had it, right? Drive back home, go to set it. I, first of all, the first thing I need to do to set it up is get it to, to like plug into my computer, right? Well, I got it to plug into my computer, but uh, it basically was saying I had to download some software in order for it to work, some software that I already had because my other external hard drive is a Seagate. So I'm like, why do I have to download this again? I already have it, it should just work. It wasn't showing up, just troubleshooting. 
technology and troubleshooting. That's what, it was a bunch of bullshit for a few days, you know? So it was just very like frustrating because I had vacation and I wanted to be super productive and get all these videos out. I wanted to have a video out about how we made our art car for Burning Man. And then I also just wanted to have like a, a video reel of all the footage I've had from Burning Man from the past few years that I've gone. And it just was like setback after setback. I finally got the external hub to work. And then of course I need to transfer all of my stuff onto that, which is the whole reason I got it, which clearly is going to take a long time. So it was just a lot of that going on. Okay. What happened next <laughs> after that? Um, yeah, so I was filming, obviously, like I told you, I did the gym equipment, the unboxings. Um, yeah, the, the, the microphone, you know, thing. Uh, the other thing that was going on was test driving new cars with my sister. We're both in need of a car. And so that's another reason why with all buying all this technology equipment, I'm kind of like, I like didn't want to be dropping, you know, a G on a new camera and then a couple hundred on a new memory card, new memory card reader and an, an external hub. But in my head, I'm like, you know what? It was time, you know, it was time, right? So after that, I got my furlough notice. <laughs> which I knew was coming. We all knew it was coming, right? Um, uh, you could go watch, just type in flight attendant furlough or not a flight attendant anymore. And you'll see all the famous flight attendant YouTubers that are like pouting about it. Um, it is sad to talk about. I mean, I have invested five years with my company. It's a seniority driven, uh, career and industry. And so five years is a lot to me might not be a lot compared to other people that have been flying 30 or 40 years, but you don't get to 30 and 40 years without the first five. Right. And so I'm at five years and I also am an initial training instructor for my company, which I just went through last year, which was a very difficult process. And just, I was really exciting to be uh, teaching people. We were supposed to be hiring so much. So, you know, I was going to be teaching and, um, I was just really like looking forward to being a part of so many people's new career. And now myself and others are facing furlough and it's just completely crazy that I just, you know, I talked to a few people about this and, um, a lot of us feel very naive. Like we just feel like we were naive about this. Like we never thought we would face furlough, you know, like when you think about other airline furloughs that happened, um, there was in, let's see, well, obviously nine 11 today is actually nine 11. Um, as we, as I'm recording this and I hope to have it actually up today too, because I don't plan on editing much. I just pretty much plan on, you know, uploading this straight up, but, um, you know, 9-11, obviously there was furloughs because people were scared to fly. Then in 2009, there were some furloughs because of some type of, you know, virus thing. Um, I forget which one it was. There are also in 2014, I think was a few furloughs, but it was very like short lived. With COVID, this is very unpredictable. I mean, it's just an unpredictable situation and I'm not even going to get into it like in detail because everyone's always curious, but the aviation industry is like so beyond complex. Like I can't even get into it in this video. Like it's just, and, and really, I don't really want to because there's a lot of drama going on. So that happened and that was kind of like a very, like sad day. It really was just seeing it in writing. So unless the Congress extends the payroll support program to support aviation workers, I will be furloughed October 1st. And it's like one of those moments of like, fuck, what the fuck now? I I'm 33. I became a flight attendant when I was 28. I had been in the service industry my whole life in restaurants, 
uh, waitressing and bartending. And I decided at 28, like enough is enough. I need a career that is going to provide me insurance and some type of travel benefits. And that's why I became a flight attendant. <laughs> And now I am like at this point where yes, you know, it's not like I'm fired. I can get recalled and I do think I will get recalled, but it probably won't be for at least 13 months. So about a year, if not, maybe a little longer because I am in the top bracket, at least like as far as the amount of people that are getting furloughed, I am, um, you know, about like 1700 from the top. So you know, I am in, in the grand scheme of things, you know, more senior than other people getting furloughed, but I just want everyone to get recalled. Like the whole bottom that is getting recalled, I mean, furloughed is like going through some stuff and it's just really upsetting to me because these are also people I trained and people that are my friends that I've worked with. And so it's just, you know, it's just crazy because none of us have been through this uh, situation and there's a lot of comparison talk like, oh, well, we were furloughed, you know, then and, you know, it happens, you know, but like, this is way different with a global pandemic. Like, there's a lot of uncertainty. So it's just, you know, kind of like, ah, <laughs> fuck, like, now what? No health insurance, you know, no income. I've never collected unemployment in my life. I've always worked, you know, so I, I don't know. Anyway. That happened. <laughs> then, oh, Shirley just messaged me. What up, girl? Yo, Shirley just put out a video about festival content creators and outfits, and she mentioned me, and I love her so much. Go check out her channel, Shirley Delgado. She just messaged me, but I'm gonna read it after because this video is already gonna, this video is gonna be like a fucking half hour long at this rate because I talk so much. Okay, so after the furlough notice, Yes, there was, uh, there was also just other issues, obviously with my family, like certain people in my family, like are having major health issues. Um, my aunt and um, some of my aunts are having health issues. Um, you know, my father's having some, um, issues as well. And so there's just been a lot of, uh, conversations I'm having that are very difficult and, uh, it, it just is like, yeah, absolutely, absolutely draining. After that, I, let's see, like just a couple days ago, I decided, you know, the lawn was really long and I was like, I need to mow the lawn. And I was like, let me mow the lawn because all this crap keeps happening. Every time I try to film, let me just try to clear my head. Let me, you know, get the, the property looking nice. And my lawnmower wouldn't start. <laughs> Dude, I wish I was making this up, but it's like, this is what was happening and this was all during the the full moon in pisces so if you believe in that just know it's fucking true you either thrive during a, a full moon or you are going through it and i was going through it couldn't start my lawnmower um you know so gotta go buy a new lawnmower lawnmower that we want is nowhere to be found uh it can only be delivered in two weeks uh except for in one location that was near us they said there was two left so i ordered it and went to go pick it up go there to get it pick to pick it up and it's only the floor sample and it was just a whole bunch of i mean if you've been home depot you know like it was just like uh, it was just like uh it was like <laughs> come on it was the floor sample. Do you want the floor sample? My mom didn't want the floor sample because it didn't come up with a box or instructions. Then they said, oh, well, we could print the instructions for you. Okay, fine, we'll take it. So they take it down. But then it didn't have the air filter in it. It didn't have the spark plug. The guy goes and gets the spark plug and the air filter for it. As we're looking at the instructions for the air filter, it's saying that there should be three parts to the air filter. And that those parts were missing. So it was like whoever had put it together, like it wasn't in there. And it was just... Okay, no, we're not taking it. Sorry to make you go through all this, but no, we're not taking it. It was, it was just like all this like frustrating stuff and to in my head have this whole like week of productivity and 
getting shit done and getting ahead, which was really my main goal. I just want to get ahead with my channel. I don't want to keep working video to video. It's like working paycheck. If you ever worked a job paycheck to paycheck, it's like, you know, when you're younger or like even now you might be like, you know, it's stressful when you're working paycheck to paycheck. Like, so, you know, that's how I feel right now with my channel. Like it's like video to video. And I was hoping to get all ahead with like tons of videos and now I have no videos and now it's been over two weeks. And so then I was starting to get down on myself because I'm like being so hard on myself. Like now I have no videos out. Now I didn't do this. Now I didn't do that. No, 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 Like, you know, and like, I don't know. It's just, it was just a really, it was just a really rough, you know, you know, week and a half, two weeks, basically. So that leads me to my next point, which is, so what have I been doing? So I've really been trying to just do things that fill me up inside, you know, that make me feel good. I have started exercising again. I now have my gym equipment set up over here in the studio and I have been starting to run and I'm really hoping to vlog this whole fitness journey for you to show you that it's possible to get into shape. It's also possible to lose yourself. I mean, anyone that has known me for a long time knows that I fluctuate a lot. I, I was super heavy years ago and then I got into the best shape of my life and then since then it's been very back and forth. And so I just um, have been doing that. I have been journaling and reading. Currently I am reading this book, Meant for More. It is by Lisa Savvich. I don't know if I am pronouncing her name right, but I'm about halfway through it and been doing exercises within this book, in my journal. And basically this book is about um, it's not about finding your purpose. It's about basically how to sell yourself or sell what you want to talk about without being salesy or pushy or it is a, it also is about like kind of focusing in and narrowing down on what your gifts are type of thing. So I do realize what I'm good at. I know that I am a good video editor. I know that I'm a good artist and I'm crafty. And I also know that I'm good at explaining things. So that's why I really feel like I wanted to launch my YouTube when I did because I feel like I I'm good at explaining things and I really just wanted to share my passions with people and my creativity and, and stuff like that. And so I wrote a list in my journal um, yesterday, which was one of the exercises and it basically had you write everything that you have been through, um, you know, in your life and then what were the, you know, Basically, what was the outcome? Like, what did you learn from those experiences? And then kind of evaluate that list as if it was someone else. And what are the types of traits that that person has? But basically, when I like looked it over, I kind of realized, you know, every time something quote unquote, like bad happened to me, something good came out of it. And there was a part in this chapter where she actually, actually, I may have wrote it in my journal, so I, I don't have to find it in the book, but there was a part where she says, let's see. Basically, like she had gotten fired from what she thought was her dream job. And then her getting fired led to her starting her own business, which is now like a multi-million dollar business. And so I'm trying to find, I think I did write it down cause I resonated with it. Uh, but I did, I wrote a lot. Like there's been so much that I've been writing and, and working with, with this book. But, um, let's see. I of course can't find it. 
because there's a lot of writing in here. Yeah, sometimes your blessings can be tough to swallow and it said like being fired, but in my case I wrote like being furloughed. Um, you know, and so yeah, like there's just been a lot of things I've been resonating with this book as far as like where is the universe redirecting me with this furlough? Now, of course, it hasn't happened yet. Congress may extend the payroll support program and then I will still have my job until March and then hopefully, you know, there'll be a vaccine and flying will be back to normal or if not, I'll be back in that same position again. But basically, I'm trying to understand the redirection. So the first thing that I did was I have signed up for a class at the School of Motion and I want to learn After Effects. I had said I want to learn After Effects, so that class is starting October 5th and it's just a basic introduction to After Effects and then from there I will probably take one of their more advanced classes. But I have this whole vision of like what, where I want to go with my YouTube channel as far as creativity. I love 2D animation and I really would love to incorporate 2D animation into my videos. I think it'd be engaging and I think it also would be fun for me to show a little bit of a different creative approach as far as educational videos with having 2D animation. Of course that means it's going to be a lot more work but like that's kind of just how I like see my channel going. Um, so that's really exciting. That's like one thing. So I'm finally going to learn After Effects and I, you know, have signed up for a course because I'm just a struct, I'm a structured type person. Like I could of course watch all these free tutorials on YouTube, but it's very all over the place. I much rather, you know, have assignments and have a class and have, you know, a teacher that I can like reach out to pertaining to certain questions and stuff like that. So I'm excited for that. That's exciting. Um, what else am I going to do? Um, let's see. Um, actually, how much time do I have left? I'm just watching the time to make sure because DSLR cameras shut off after a certain time. And I know I've been talking for a really long time right now. Um, so I'm hoping that learning After Effects is going to improve my video skills. Um, something else as far as from this book and like like kind of connecting the dots with where I want to go with this channel is I had posted on my Instagram yesterday, my Twitter and my Facebook page. I wanted to find out what people, what skill or what was the question? It was, let me pull it up for you. And feel free if you're watching this video, you can comment below if you aren't on my Facebook or you missed this post, but yep, my camera died. This is going to be like a 40 minute video. I don't even care because the people that do care will watch it and that's all that matters to me. Um, so let's see, actually it's probably gonna be over 40 minutes cause I want to show you this Oracle spread too. So I don't even know. It's going to be long, but the question was, please don't be afraid to comment. The more answers, the better. Thank you in advance for participating. And the question is, if you were to ask for my advice about something you feel I am skilled at, what would it be? Or if I've already helped you with something, how have I helped you? So pretty much I wanted to see what other people had to say, what they think I would bring value to as far as a learning experience or something like that. And I got several answers as far as you know I'm very thorough when I explain things I also am really good at video editing like people are very impressed with my video editing skills and um, I got a lot for tarot and astro astrology I got a lot for Burning Man and I got a lot as far as DIY and craft stuff so this is all stuff that I plan to do on my channel anyway but I guess what my point is is that I think I've reached a point with my channel where it's really important to me that I plan content out and I produce content in a way that I'm proud of. So 
there's a lot of people that say when you're starting YouTube, you know, just get content out, make sure you're posting at least once a week because the algorithm, you know, you want to be getting a video out once a week, blah, 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 blah. And I think I've reached a point where I'd rather have, um, quality over quantity. So, and I'm not saying the other videos that I've put out once a week are bad. It's just that, or, cause they're not, I think they're, they're made well. I just think with the direction I want to go as far as teaching people about tarot cards, teaching people about Burning Man, that is a massive project because I have all the different videos I would break down for these topics, but actually constructing a script so that I stay on track um, and then, you know, filming it and putting and then editing it all together, like it, it's going to take me some time, obviously. And in addition to that, learning After Effects next next month for October and November. I'm hoping that that is going to, you know, introduce some cool new stuff into my videos. But I really just feel like I want to stop pressuring myself to have videos out just for the sake of having videos out. And I don't know if that's a good thing based off of the research I've done, but I just think that it's necessary right now. I mean, I think I'm going to have unboxing videos up. I think I am going to start introducing tarot first just because this stuff really makes me happy. And I think people are interested in learning about it. Um, but from there, from that too, like another thing that I really, really like have this gut feeling that I should do is launch my podcast. And the podcast is actually an idea I had for a YouTube series that I wanted to start probably like two years ago, probably maybe even before two years ago. And it just still hasn't happened. And I just realized the amount of work that and, and another learning experience that will be because I'm going to have to get a microphone. I'm going to have to, you know, learn how to edit my podcast, which hopefully won't be too hard since I edit videos. And, uh, but the thing is like, really, like I got to come up with a lot of content and I need to be ahead. Like the, I guess my biggest fear with starting the podcast, sorry, um, while going to school and, you know, trying to do all this other YouTube content is that I don't want to get behind. Like I want it to flow like how all these other people have podcasts out and they have this schedule like I just I just kind of want to get my shit together if that makes sense like I just want to kind of like organize and I think I want to use this month of September to really plan things out so even though I might not have a video out like just know that I'm working in the background if that makes sense I really think I need to use this time to to focus on a strategy basically. And, um, yeah, it's really interesting cause this book was like, you can't like stay in a standstill. You just have to like keep moving forward with stuff. And I had done like a, um, year ahead spread in July. And one of the, the Oracle card that I got for this month was standstill, which is like really interesting because that's kind of like, I, have felt like I'm at this standstill because it's like I've been like getting defeated with all this stuff I've been trying to do. And so I like really feel like it's important that I just, I don't know, like plan this content out. And I hope you all understand that um, for the people that do care about my channel. So it was really great to hear some people's feedback. I would love to hear your feedback. Um, I'm trying, let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. Cause this is a really long update video as you can tell. Uh, oh, and you know what? I don't think I did. I, this shirt is from rave with Shay and I just wanted to shout it out. It says I'd rather be at a rave. Obviously, obviously I'd much rather be at a rave or a festival right now. It's like, so crazy right now um so like you know like I said in the beginning I understand like these problems clearly are so in insignificant compared to what some other people are dealing with as far as like the entire west coast being on fire we still have 
police brutality and and um, there's harm still being done to black people and all this upsetting, you know, things on the outside in addition to everything that was happening. And so like, I do recognize that like, my problems are very small and, you know, I'm really grateful that, um, you know, I'm, you know, safe and that I'm going to have the time to work on this content, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to understand the redirection as far as losing my job, but it's still just stressful thinking going into a global pandemic and being unemployed and having to find health insurance and pay for it and, you know, obviously losing all my flight benefits, which is like one of the main reasons I got the job so I could travel and see friends and go to festivals. And so it's just like a lot of things that are still upsetting. It doesn't make it easier just because they're not like major problems. It's still upsetting. You know, I feel like I am rambling. Oh my God. I just like felt like so called to explain all this to you because I just don't think it's fair to just like be on a roll uploading and then out of nowhere, like not upload for like weeks. You know what I mean? Um, okay. So let me see. I just want to make sure that I covered everything. Um, so yeah, so that's basically the plan is possibly plan and launch a podcast next month, go back to school next month. I definitely am going to do Burning Man content for everyone. I had started a Burning Man series last year before the burn and I ran out of time. Like silly me, why did I think I'd be able to get all these Burning Man videos done before Burning Man? I got like, I got like two done. <laughs> like it was like, it's just too much information. And so, um, I will be doing that because I did realize that on my Instagram stories, I did like a bunch of trivia and there was a lot of people that participated with it. So I know there's a lot of people that are interested about it. And so I will be doing that, but like, I just really want all that, all my ducks in a row before I start that, if that makes sense. And, um, yeah, I kind of wanted to show you this Oracle spread, but I think I'm going to make it a separate video because this video is just way too long right now. So that is my update. I really hope you're all doing well. And I'm sorry if I was like way too repetitive. I just kind of wanted to vent and tell you guys like what I've been doing. Basically just a lot of journaling. I did actually start a tarot and Oracle and Lenormand journal too. I've just kind of been like doing things for me because it's just, um, I've been in a, I've been in a mood and it's really, really hard for me to edit and create when I am in a mood that is just, um, what with everything that I've, has been going on. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching or listening. If you listened in on this video, also, um, I hope you like this setup I have. Okay. So I really like how the view looks on my phone over here. I really love this view, but I don't know if I could record long videos on my phone. I like to film with my DSLR. So it's kind of making me think I need to get a wide lens, but okay. Back to this view. So yeah, I really prefer that view better because it's like you kind of like get a close up of me and like this whole setup with the cards and everything. Um, but I don't have enough storage to be filming all these long videos on my phone. So let me know if you like this setup here. This is going to be pretty much my setup for when I do deck unboxings. I do show close-ups from this angle of the table of the cards with the unboxing. So it's not like I'm going to be like doing this <laughs> far away. Like you'll get to see the cards, but this will probably just be like for like my intros and outros, giving you a little bit of background about the decks and stuff like that. So let me know if you like it. And, uh, if you guys have any advice on how to get through tough times, let me know. I know that Everything happens for a reason. I am a firm believer in that my entire life, even just doing the exercise of, you know, why things happen. 
or things that have happened to me and the outcome. Everything that would be considered bad led to something greater. And so that is what I think is about to happen. I think there's about to be a huge shift in my life. And yeah, it's exciting now that I've worked through some things and, and have like had time to like really like think about all this and like, you know, share it with you. Yeah, I think things are going to be okay. So thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Um, I'm sure most of the people that have stuck around this long are my subscribers. So, but if you're not subscribed and you came across this video, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing. I do have a lot of cool stuff that I plan on having on this channel. See you in the next one. Peace.